Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and today we are doing the polar bear. Oh. We have Keenan here working the cameras. Hola. And we will be doing this project in six steps. So our very first step is we will put in our sky. Our second step we will put in the shadows of on the bear and around the bear. Our third step we'll do our water. Our fourth step we will do our face and our paw. Our last, I mean, our fifth step, we'll go back in and do more shadows, specifically on the face of the polar bear. And then our very last step is we'll be putting in the highlights, the, the white, glistening parts of this painting. Ah, yeah. the sweaty parts. <laughs> the sweaty parts, pretty Please. <laughs> Actually, never mind. That's a bad idea. <laughs> okay, we're using three paintbrushes. We have a round two, we have a round six, we have a wash one inch. Um, we are using four colors. Our first color is space blue. Our second color is amethyst. Our third color is yellow ochre. And our last color is bleed proof white. Which I'm not going to swatch because it's white. We are using Let's Make Art watercolor paper. It is a wood pulp paper. Please make sure you paint on the paintable side, which is the more textured side, the one that's a little bit rougher. I'm using just blue painter's tape to tape my painting down. And yeah. Okay, we're gonna do our outline, our oath, and then get into painting. Nice. Um, now, before we get started, I just wanna say that I'm super excited to paint this polar bear, and I found the reference photo for it on unsplash.com, which is a website you can use to um, use reference photos that are commercial free or royalty free. And let me give you the, the photographer. Hans Jurgen is the person who photographed this. So thank you. Hans. Thank you, Hans. We're super excited to paint this bear. What a good name. Yeah, it's good, right? And that way, if you guys want to see the actual reference photo that I based this off of, you can oh, go and look yeah, that up. Oh, yeah. What was it called? Uh, Un Unsplash. Splash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's actually where I get a majority of our reference photos. Dot com. Yeah. Majority of our reference photos dot com. That's what you're looking at. That should be a <laughs> website. <laughs> Oh, where do you go? Oh, the majority of my my, <laughs> what, my reference photos, dot com. There we go. Oh. Okay, so I have my outline here. I taped it to my watercolor paper. I'm going to take my graphite paper and do dark, shiny side down. Any mark you make on this will be transferred to your watercolor paper. Please make sure that you pay attention to your pressure. The darker, I mean, the harder you push down, the darker the line will be underneath. I always like to do, ooh, that's way too light. You guys can't even see that. Ooh, bar barely. Bear, bear, bear. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to do one test line and then lift it up and kind of just see that's much better. Oh, yes. Now, you want to be careful with this one because our polar bear is white and he doesn't really have a hard edge. So if you do a super dark outline, that's gonna be pretty obvious mm. on this painting. Just giving you guys a heads up. I'm gonna go a little bit darker than I normally would just so you guys can actually see what it is that I'm doing. If I was doing this at home, that first pass that I did where I was like, oh, that's really light, I probably would have kept that. As long as I can kind of see what's happening, that's all I pay attention to. If you have struggle with getting a light um, line on your bear, there's a couple things that you can do. One is you can actually use a light box to trace instead of graphite paper. They're actually really affordable and not too expensive. I think we even sell some on, my, on our website. Um, or if you want to keep using the graphite paper, that's my preferred method of transferring, then you can just use like a felt tip marker and because it's a soft tip, it automatically has a light pressure when you press down. Now you'll see on this outline I have dashes. The dashes are just to let you know that there is a value change or like a highlighted or shadowed area. So like these hash marks here, you don't have to put in. It's just to tell you this is, should be a darker value around this. It should be casting a shadow. So, um, you know, it's up to you though, what you want to include and what you want to include. Just basically remember that outlines are guidelines for you. They're a tool and you don't have to use them if you don't want to and you can go off script if you would like to and 
Maybe you just don't even like outlines and you're like, I just want to try and freehand draw this. That's amazing. Totally cool. Go for it. We appreciate that here. I just don't want, like drawing is a skill and it takes time. And I just feel like painting is so fun that I don't want um, the, the drawing skill to hinder you from the joys of watercolor. So that's why we provide outlines. Yeah, that unneeded pressure. Yeah. Okay, I think that is it. Oh, my bear looks so creepy without the <laughs> eyes covered, colored Hello. in, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I didn't do the, this. The other nice thing about using markers is usually they, they are colored so you can tell where you've traced. Okay, let's do our oath and then we'll get to painting. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Whoa, that was a little early. Was it? Nailed it. <laughs> now, um, I love starting that way because, I mean, especially with these paintings, usually the paintings near the end of the month are a little bit more difficult and take more time. And because of that, sometimes we get a little bit stressed out about it but breathe we're here to play yes we're here to learn this is low stakes the worst thing that can happen is you gotta throw this away it's just a piece of paper not bad at all not bad at all i throw things away all the time <laughs> candy bar wrappers <laughs> okay so i'm gonna take my one inch wash and before I get painting, I'm actually gonna take my salt. I'm using a McCormick Sea Salt Grinder. Now, I've used salt on quite a bit of these projects this month, just because I think it's so fun and such an easy way to add texture. However, they're not necessary. And if you guys, if salt is not working for you, if you've tried it and you're just like, what is this? I don't like it, it's frustrating to me. Put it away for a little bit, don't use it. You can just use bleed proof white as your snow dots and not have salt. It's not a big deal. I just wanna remind you guys, you're in charge of your artistic journey here. We're just helping you any way we can. Yeah. But you can make all the decisions. I would like to submit that salt is fantastic and you should continue to give it a try. I mean, I'm a, I am agree. I love salt. I think it's so Salt's great. amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna take my one inch wash I'm gonna grab a little bit of amethyst, a tiny, tiny bit of space blue. And I'm gonna add water to it. I'm going for a medium value here. But like purpley. Okay, there we go. And I'm just gonna start painting my sky horizontally. Now you can overlap the bear. Don't paint the whole thing because the bear stays white, but we do have bleed proof white. So if you do get some purple, you know, along the edges here, it's really not a big deal because we'll be able to take that white and uh, fix. When you said the word sky, do you know what song got stuck in my head? Hmm. I could be brown, I could be blue, mm. I could be violet sky. I like that song. I don't know the next words or else I would. I ask. only know those parts. <laughs> and I'm just kind of going up and down a little bit to, I had streaks, horizontal streaks. So I'm going up and down a little bit to, to even those out. And then when it's still wet, salt it. Salt it. And you can even go, you can go as dark as you feel comfortable with this sky. You really can. And actually on the horizon, I might just do another little swoop. Because why not? Did I already lay down salt? Yes. Is that going to mess up the texture? Probably. <laughs> but that's okay. It's all an adventure, right? Now, if you don't have a one inch wash brush, Another thing that you can use is actually a paper towel. Paper towel you can use to spread paint and get an even wash, um, fairly easy. The only thing is paper towels are absorbent, so usually you have to end up using a lot of paint to get that to, to spread across, but it's a little trick for you guys. Okay, that was step one. Wow. <laughs>
I know. Now we're going to move on to step two. We're going to do the shadows on our bear. Now I love painting white animals with watercolor because they take they that like, all you're actually painting is the shadows on the animal and not the entire animal. Um, so I feel like they don't take me as long because I'm just painting shadows and then all of a sudden they become three dimensional and I'm like, oh my god, it's a white animal <laughs> on my paper. Okay. So I'm going to mix together a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of the amethyst to get a gray. Oh, wow. Okay. And those two colors are complementary colors. That's why they tone out with each other, purple and yellow. And then kind of looking at my reference photo, I'm going to start putting in my shadows. So it's shadowed in the middle here, underneath the chin. I don't so much have a shadow under my chin. <laughs> hey, buddy, I feel ya. <laughs> Mine goes it's straight down. It's a constant down. shade of the same color. Just, just as highlighted, <laughs> same plane here. <laughs> Art jokes. <laughs> so looking at my bear, and you can also look at your outline here too. You can kind of see where I put dash. See how it's kind of dash, 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 dash. So this is the area that's going to be our value, our shadows that we're putting mm. in here. With the edges stay highlighted. And it doesn't, you can see that I'm lifting up my brush. I'm not doing just a straight, even wash. And that's because even though the center is shadowed, there's different planes going on here. He has his tummy, he has his chest, he has his legs, and they all are kind of going in and out, and they're also covered in fur. And so I'm just kind of lifting up my brush here and there to say like this is not perfectly flat and smooth. And then on our arm, this arm, it's kind of in the center here. And I'm just doing brush strokes. Remember to lift up your brush. Okay. And also, if you guys want to add a little bit of space blue to this, like you guys can choose what your shadow color is. I went for like a gray, purple gray, um, but you can add a little bit of blue to it. That will give it kind of a green tint, but that's okay. That's not a big deal. Polar bears are huge. Yeah. I have no idea how big though. I'll look it up. Okay. Oh my goodness. What, how big are they? Well, I don't understand centimeters, so stand by. Adult on hind legs from 5'9 to 7'9. Whoa! Yeah. That is huge. That's huge. Oh, adult females are roughly half the size of males and normally weigh 330 to 550 pounds. Wow. They're half. That's amazing. I know. And the other thing about polar bears is if you look like they're white, but their coloring is actually for the most part almost a cream and in some places like a tan. So that's why on some of these kind of shadowed areas, I went for a little bit more hints using that yellow ochre to kind of show like give give a nod towards that color on their on their fur and for any of the places where you overlapped on the purple don't worry we'll go back with our bleed proof white at the end and kind of tighten those up at this at this stage it's not really a a big deal okay and then i'm going to do the shadow on my snow so i'm going to take a little bit of that space blue mix some water in there and then using my round six, I'm just going to do a light little horizontal brush strokes. 
giving a hint that it's standing, cast in shadow, and make sure you go a little bit behind the polar bear too. Okay, that is step two. Now we're gonna go to step three. We are going to paint our water. So with our water here, I'm just trying to get a really dark value. So I'm basically gonna mix all three of my colors, space blue, amethyst, yellow ochre, and this should make a really dark, like navy color. Let me swatch it here for you guys, right there. Guess what the largest polar bear ever recorded was? Eight foot four inches. How much do you think it weighed? 627 pounds. Okay, are you ready for the facts? Yeah. 2,209 pounds. That's more than my car. <gasps> I was so off. Oh, you were off on both. So much. <laughs> 11 feet, one inches tall on its hind legs. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that would be terrifying. That's like my house. <laughs> <laughs> They're huge. That is insane. It was the size of 11 grown men. Wow. Yeah. I just can't even fathom seeing that size in person. Nope. It's like the same thing of like when you see like it on screen or hear about it, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when you see it in person, you're like, oh, oh my. That's how I was about ocean waves. Like when I saw ocean waves on like TV, I'm like, oh, yeah. a wave. I could surf that. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go there and like four foot waves are terrifying. Yeah, because they're freaking huge. And they're heavy. Yeah. When they'll they they'll mess you up. Splash against yeah. that ground. Like, yes. They will take you out. It is, whew, whew. it is humbling to say the least. Okay, so I mixed all three of my colors together to get a nice dark value here. And then I'm just going to go along my edge on my, like this is like the water, like broken ice edge. Okay. Which is where polar bears spend most of their time hunting for food. Oh, perfect. And then on the edges here, I'm gonna use water to blend out this color. So it's a lighter value. But in the middle here, right directly above where that polar bear is standing, I'm gonna keep it a dark value because I want it to show that this polar bear is casting a shadow into the water. So I'm gonna use that same dark value. And we'll go back and put in the, the little white lines, that ice edge. But you see how that kind of looks like a reflection now? Totally. I'm going to lift this up because I was kind of going. There we go. Wow. Yeah. Icy edge. And then if you want to go again, this edge right here, and just kind of darken that up and let that bleed out. Just let it bleed out. Cool. Okay, that's step three. Now we're gonna move on to step four. We're gonna do our face and our paw. Now, the same dark value is what we're gonna use for essentially the black on our bear's face. But I do wanna call something out, which is the eyes are super, super tiny, very, very tiny. So if you would rather use like a pen to do the eyes, use a pen. Um, and I'll just kind of demonstrate here because Eyes and nose and mouth shape is what gives our animals personality. It's what kind of differentiates them from each other. And that's why it's actually super hard to make animals look exactly the same, even if you painted them one right after another, because the slightest change in angle from the eyes to the nose to the mouth will actually greatly affect the overall look of your animal. No pressure. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. That last tidbit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to take my pen and if you're using a paintbrush use a round two or if you have something smaller use smaller and I'm just going to do the eyes and leave a little and you can see it on our outline just a white dot for the glare <laughs> this bear looks so angry at this point 
Kind of looks like he's doing kung fu. Okay. And if you want to do the nose and the mouth with that, you can. I'm going to switch to my brush to kind of show you guys how to do it. So I have my round two. I'm picking up the same dark value. So I have the mouth here. And sometimes what I do is um, if you pick up a lot of paint on your brush, even if you're using a small brush, it makes your like belly of your brush full. It kind of spreads everything out because it's holding so much paint. So sometimes what, I'm, what I'll do if I need something a dark value but don't want a thick line is I'll pick up a bunch of paint and then on a dry spot in my palette, I will sandwich my bristles against it. So I'll press it one way and then press it another way. Mm. So kind of go back and forth. So it's keeping all of that dark value but now my bristles are sandwiched and pointed together. I love sandwiches. You know what, really, me too, I love sandwiches. Okay, and I'm just gonna do the mouth. They did a study where they had people make PB&Js and they were 73% more yummy when someone else makes you a PB&J. No way. Yep. You know what, I totally believe that. I do too. Okay, so I'm gonna do the top of the, the front of the nose. Like so. And Keenan, maybe make sure the close-up uh, camera is getting this face. It is. Okay. Because that would be a, this would be a good spot to kind of close up on. Okay. And then we're going to let that dry for a second. We still have to paint kind of the top of the nose, um, but it's too wet to kind of mess with anything right now. So I'm going to paint my little ears like so and I'm going to go back to kind of that gray mixture that I did for the original shadows and I'm going to start doing the shadows on the face so you can utilize your outline to kind of help remind you of where the shadows are so there's one in between the eyes And then I have these lines here kind of showing like the cheekbones, like the side of the face. We got the chin here. And there's some really slight right underneath the eye. And behind. These are barely there colors, you guys, barely there. And the nice thing about doing like barely there color, bare, <laughs> <laughs> is um, you can always like add more and make it darker later. You uh. know what I'm saying? So like don't stress. And if you want it to look like it's smiling, you can make that mouth line kind of curl up. Hear me out. What if he just caught a fish? Oh, and he has like a fish in his mouth mm -hmm. or holding a fish? Mm -hmm. Both. Both. <laughs> Got a little bit of color up here on the forehead. So really what I'm doing is I'm kind of just looking at my reference photo. I'm identifying where are those darker values and I'm, and I'm painting them. But it's also helpful. You guys can look at the original reference photo. You can also just think about the overall shape of this polar bear's face and think, okay, where are the sockets? Where's the bone structure? Where's the nose? Like, where is it coming out and where is it receding? And wherever it's receding, that's where you're gonna put in your shadows. Does he have a mustache? <laughs> how many mustaches does he have? One on each eye? <laughs> we don't know how polar bears live. Okay. And then I'm just gonna do kind of a wash over the glare on the eyes using a medium value. We want there to be a hint of a highlight, but not like, I felt like the white was just like kind of scary eyes almost a little bit like, mm. you know. Okay, and we're gonna let that dry for a second. When it comes to doing detail work on faces or really trying to like finesse an area, I like to initially lay stuff down and then let it settle, let it dry and then come back to it. Um, so let's go to our paw using that same dark value. Like so. Okay. 
and don't forget the little hints of the nails on the feet. I never spent a lot of time on feet. You know what I mean? It's just like... That's because feet are gross. It's a foot. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have to... You know what's there. You don't need feet, actually. Turns out <laughs> they did a study. You don't need them. Turns out... Don't need to see them? <laughs> okay. And then, if your nose is dry enough, I want you to use a medium to a light value and paint that top of the nose. Just do a swoop across. Don't do it when it's too wet though because then all of that dark value in the front will go right to the top. Okay, Give that a second to dry. We're going to move on to step five and then we'll come back to step four and kind of finish up that face. So step five, I'm going to go back into my shadows on my bear and really um, add to that overall form and the little fur textures that we have. So especially under this arm here, there's going to be more of a shadow. So I'm doing another layer. I'm going to put down my dark value first and then using water, I'm just going to kind of blend it out. Remember to utilize your paper towel so you can wipe your brush on there and get rid of any extra excess paint or color. I love the shadows. It's good, right? Yeah. So now at this point with my shadows, I'm going to be kind of more aware of the brush strokes that I'm using. I want them to be pretty gestural. I want them to give at least an idea of the form of the bear that we're painting or the fur texture that we have going on. So there's going to be a darker shadow here, kind of going up through the middle. And notice that I'm doing brush strokes that are kind of like whooshes, whoosh, 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 whoosh. And I'm just thinking about fur getting gathered together in patches. And it kind of has that kind of whoosh texture. <laughs> that, you know, that whoosh shape. Similar to <laughs> when you shoot a basketball hoop, but different. Yes. Shoot a basketball hoop. <laughs> you know, when you throw the whole hoop in the air and just wait for the whoosh. It's sim <laughs> similar to that. And this is where we're kind of saying like defining the leg a little bit. And then the leg over here. Listen, analogies aren't a strong suit of mine. <laughs> mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'm going to do another extra shadow, especially right underneath this chin into the neck. Mm -hmm. Directly into the neck. And I'm just going to dream of a, of a jawline. <laughs> Like this, this is why I had. I wish I had good Photoshop skills. Every <laughs> photo of me would look different. <laughs> and the reason why we're putting this shadow in these shadows in these areas is usually um, when you're looking at form, when something is going away from us, like our neck, it's going to be a darker value than something that's coming towards us, like our chin, your nose your forehead, like these are the parts of your face that for the most part, for most of us, are coming out, which means that they're gonna be highlighted. We need to show that they're not on the same place, plane as our cheeks, they're not on the same plane as our neck, they're not on the same plane as our shoulders. So that's how we communicate this depth of space is by the values. And when something is a lighter value, it's coming at you. When something um, is farther away from you, it's gonna be a darker value. And I know that's tricky because we just painted the nose black and it's right there, but black is actually the color of the nose. So you don't, yeah, I, know, I know it's confusing, but it's okay. There are like rules for that. Yeah. If it's a black nose and it's gotta have a shine somewhere, right? Yep. And we'll go back in with our bleed proof white and do a quick little highlight on that. Our clicks were so similar in my <laughs> feedback that I almost forgot who was first. <laughs> It's impressive. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to start, I'm putting in a little bit of that paw there. Mm. And then when I get to this edge here, I'm going to like kind of curve my brush strokes a little bit. 
This is fur that's going up around over the arm. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. And I'm going to do another layer of shadow underneath this arm here. Now I'm kind of doing more of a blue shadow on this bear as opposed to the purple that I have in my reference photo and I kind of actually really like, I like that blue. I think it looks nice. I think it goes really well with the, uh, the ice water reflection. Yeah, but you guys, like we're color mixing here. We're um, like, you guys get to choose really what colors you want your shadows to be, what colors you want. Um, if you want to lean more purple, more blue, more gray, like this is where you get to make those choices because you are the artist. Just doing another layer of shadow on that ice. There's a little more, more shadow up around You could this. give this guy a bandana. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Holding a Coke bottle or something. Or a pizza. Yes. A pizza in one arm and a Coke <laughs> bottle in the other. <laughs> That's perfect. my kind of bear. Actually, that to be called Cola Coke. In case of legality. Oh, yes, yes. I'll call Vin Diesel. <laughs> He'll work it out for you. He'll him. know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to switch to my two, and I'm going to go back into my face on my bear. And just kind of like tighten things up. So I feel like this needs to be a little bit darker. I feel like the shadows around the eyes need to be a little bit darker. Then all of a sudden my bear looks tired. <laughs> <laughs> he's stressed. That's why, that's why he's got a pizza and a Coke. He's like, oh, it's the weekend. It's really an energy drink. He's like, I just gotta get through today. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> now, um, you can see my brush stroke went a little haywire here. You see how I cut into my jawline? Mm -hmm. That's not a big deal because we have bleed proof white. Oh. So I'm just gonna take white and adjust that jawline when I go back. That's why I love bleed proof white so much. So um, usually when I'm really, when I don't have bleed proof white, I try and be very, very precise about my line work because with watercolor you can't erase. Um, but when you have bleed, bleed proof white, it's just a really wonderful tool that it just gives you a little bit more freedom um, to kind of make, make some uh, adjustments. I would love to see a polar bear in the wild. Yeah, like a safe... Safe distance. Safe distance for Do you me. think they're angry? It's not that I think that they're angry. I they're just, just significantly larger. I just think that they're wild animals who are majestic and majestic. huge. And um, I don't want to, to be too close. make them mad. Because <laughs> yeah. they could literally tear me apart. Yeah, they so, don't have rational thoughts. They could just snap. Well, I, I think it's just like, I don't necessarily know enough about polar bears to know what behaviors to look for if they're in yeah. aggressive. If maybe there's a mama and a baby That's close by. That's what I was by. thinking. It's a protective thing, if anything. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'm by their house and that makes them uncomfortable. I don't know. Or it's their favorite fishing place where they order pizza. Yeah, they're we like... We don't know. They're like, I'm just trying to get through my day. This is my neighborhood. <laughs> they're not coming at us. They're just like, you know, get off my lawn. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to take my round two, and I'm gonna start doing a little bit more fur textures using a slightly darker value. So I'm kind of going on here, and if you look at your outline here, you can see where I have the little chick, 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 hmm. you know? So you can follow that, or if you, if you still, if you can't see it through your outline anymore, you can just eyeball it. And then in the middle here, these fur textures just get a little bit bigger because it's larger clumps of fur clumping together. Boop, 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 
tout. Okay. Oh, that's a hairy guy. <laughs> He's furry. Yep. <laughs> and I'm just going to put a little bit of color here on my edges. And this is kind of where you're just kind of paying attention to the details. There's little black marks for the hands. Darker value here. There we go. Doesn't he look a little bit nicer now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our bleed proof white and we're just going to clean up some areas. So here I'm going to go along and reclaim that white edge on my bear where my background overlapped and it works out well because it's kind of adding you know highlights fur texture you, i'm even covering up some of the pencil marks too yeah bleed proof white's crazy and you can change the color of bleed proof white mm-hmm Okay, the top of the paws here. And even inside, like where it's shadowed, the, there's still a little bit of that hint of like white fur, highlighted fur. Gotta let the light in. Even when there's shadow, there's light. And then here I'm gonna fix this jawline. Here we go. Do a little bit of highlight right on that tip of the nose, like so. And then we're gonna go on the eyes and kind of where I have that edge on the outline. Put that there. So this is acting, mm -hmm. think of like, ice or snow has a thickness in itself. So this is like the wall and then it goes into the water, you know? Yeah. Do you think they break the ice themselves? I have no idea. That'd be really interesting. Yeah. And then I'm gonna kind of just use this rough, dry, um, dry brush technique a little bit just to give a hint of the glare on the water like so okay then I'm gonna put I'm just kind of noticing like I feel like there's needs to be a little bit more shadow here just kind of looking at ov the overall, do I need to address any more highlights, any more shadows, that kind of thing. But it's not a super, like this is a little bit tricky because it's not a super detailed, like close up face. We're working small, which sometimes is a little bit harder. But this is a great um, time to step away from your painting. When we're at this stage where we're doing detail stuff and you're like, how can I tell if this is done or not? Like, I'm not sure if I should keep messing with it, all of that stuff. Step away, look at it from far across the room, take a picture of it, 
and that will kind of make things a little bit more clear on um, areas that you need to kind of go back in and adjust. Cute little guy. I feel like I had an extra shadow here on the chin. I got like, I have like the mouth, the chin line, and then kind of like the second chin line. Oh, yes. <laughs> Me and Keenan know that. I do. <laughs> we know that well. <laughs> have the second chin line. <laughs> I might be going a little bit too crazy with my bleed proof white. <laughs> this is where. That's easy to do. It really, really is. But it's my painting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going for it. Now the thing with bleed proof white that I just want you guys to keep in mind is it's opaque, which means that um, it covers up whatever, whatever it is that you're working on. Now, when you do a watercolor painting and you use opaque paint with a watercolor um, a lot, you can tell the differences between the transparent watercolor area and the opaque area, oh. even if the colors match. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So just kind of be aware of that. Keep that in mind as you're, as you're playing with this is um, if you, there, there is a, there's a difference between putting white bleed proof white on a section of the paper and just letting the paper be white. Like the viewer can tell the difference between those. You know totally. what I'm saying? It's like a texture difference. Yeah. Or like almost like a glare difference. Yeah. Not, you you're, know, like you're adding, I mean, you're adding something to it, so it's going to change. Yeah. Okay. I think that's, I think that's good. And we're gonna do just snow in the background. Now, because I did that second wash on my background, I have some salt textures, but they're pretty subtle. And that's because I painted over them. So if you want to do like snow dots, you can, or splatters. Should we do some splatters? supposed to yell enthusiastically. I was going to say it. a fun way to do splatters is with a toothbrush. If you have yes. a toothbrush. Yes. It's actually a lot easier to do splatters too. Like a more controlled way. I also some, saw someone do splatters like they hold the pencil out instead of their finger. Oh, that's a good idea. Please put away anything. You don't want paint. You don't want paint. <laughs> white splatters on. The amount of white splatters on my computer. Uh huh. I used to clean anyone. So I, uh, I used to clean Sarah, Nicole, and occasionally Jesse's screens because they would get paint all over their computer screens. It's true. I gave up. And then he would get so he would like. So treat your treat your stuff nice. <laughs> He's like, how can you live this way? I can't even see the screen. Can't even see. There's paint everywhere. And then, you know, if you want to kind of clean up that horizon line, you can. Or you can, like, leave a little hint of the snow. It's not a big deal. Maybe, like, a rough texture on there is kind of yeah. nice. Um, and also, I want to point out, because I'm looking at this overhead, when gouache is wet, it will glare. So this dried is going to look differently than how it looks right now. Does that mm, make sense? Because yes. it's wet. So it's kind of poking out more than it will once it is dry. Cool. So if you're looking at that, you're like, what's going on on top? Because that's what I thought. I'm like, wait a second. Why is that all? It's just, just because it's still wet. I just thought was frozen. It's just iced. It's his hairstyling gel. Yeah. That line adds a lot of depth in that water. Doesn't it? Yes. Okay. I think our little polar bear is complete. 
Let's untape. Yes. Now, for those of you guys at home, try not to um, untape your painting right away because I've noticed that if I let my paper dry for like a day while it's still taped down, it stays flat. Well, not totally flat, but flatter than if I were to immediately untape it. So I just want to call that out. Oh, yes. Oh, it tore just a little right on that corner. I wasn't being gentle enough. Mm -hmm. I'm also not using my Holbein soft tape. The magic tape. Whoa, you took the tape off and that painting seems so much smaller. Boop. Look how great that is. Isn't this a cute little guy? Yeah. Cute little polar bear saying hi. Okay. Thank you guys so much for paying with me. I hope you had fun. I know that this one was a little bit tricky. It is a little bit tricky, but I think it's cute. And I think your polar bear is going to have a personality. Keenan, what's the name of our polar bear here? Hogarth. Hogarth. Beautiful name. Thank you. Hogarth, pleasure painting you. I hope you guys have fun. Can't wait to see what yours turns out like. Feel free to make this your own. You are the artist. Make decisions. You have every right to make the decisions. Trust yourself to make the decisions. And if you don't like the decisions you've made, just learn from it. That's it. That's all we're here to do is to learn. So if you're on Instagram, we'd we'll love to see what you've come up with. Uh, you can tag us at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. You can join our Facebook group that is called Let's Make Art Watercolor. And thanks for painting with me. I had a great time. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.